Fox 17 Rock Interview on the road with the incredibly talented T.G. Shepard. You probably know him from his uh, 21 hits. He used to be a music uh, promoter before he started doing his own hits. And uh, you a, a friend with Elvis. And, and your great new album, you know, with duets. And, and I'll tell you what, there's so many great cuts on here, T.G. You know, um, it's hard to pick a favorite. And the, the artist you brought in. Couldn't get any big names. Uh, tried. <laughs> you know. <laughs> No, I, you know, when, when I got ready to do this album, I, I kept thinking, well, you know, I better invite enough people so as uh, not all of them will make it. Right. All of them made it. Yeah, and, uh, and, and incredible names. I mean, you know, it, you can tell, you know, with your friendships with them, too, that it came across in the songs, like, you know, with you and Willie Nelson. Oh. And, and uh, the, the song with Delbert McClinton we were just talking about. Yeah. You know, and it's, they're just great songs. And you're known for picking the best songs. Well, I, you know what, I learned uh, uh, the importance of picking the right song from great people like Kenny Rogers, mm -hmm. uh, who picks great songs. Oh, definitely. And Conway Twitty was the world's greatest at picking songs. So I had a, I had a lot of great people to go to school on to learn about songs. So it all begins with a song. It really does. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, and, and your uh, first number one hit you know, that, that eight other record companies had, had shot down. <laughs> and, and then you walk and go, I'll record that. I, I think I, I got to tell you a funny story the devil about in the that. Bottle. <clears throat> the day that I went to the post office box to get Billboard, they had told me it was going number one. Yeah. So I went to the, the, the box and I can't, can't wait to get my Billboard to open it up and go, wow, well, you know, number one. And in that same mailbox, that same day, I picked up the billboard and there was a little box where I had sent the song out to a label. And inside that same mailbox, in this hand, was a rejection letter saying, we're sorry at this time, we do not feel that this song is commercial. Oh my goodness. And in the other hand, it was number one. Wow. So it shows you in life that you stick to your guns, you believe in, you believe in something strongly. Right. Uh, it might not be as big as you wanted it to be, mm -hmm. but if you believe strong enough, it's almost like the secret. Right. Uh, what you put out, you get back. Oh, totally. And I really believe that the song was a hit, and, and I was able to to uh, walk to the mailbox that day and have a number one in one hand and a rejection letter in the other. That is so incredible. You know, and you've had such an inter interesting career the whole time, T.G., you know, from, uh, you know, when you had your, your theater and everything and the Smokies yeah. and, and we're doing that, you took a hiatus for a while. And, and what, like we were talking earlier, you've never done a song or an album just to do a hit. You've done it because it mattered to you. Well, it does. I mean, the music will live longer than the artist. Right. It'll be here hopefully a long time. So when you when you have that opportunity to, to go out and do an album, you want it to count. Right. I mean, you really do. Mm -hmm. And and so with me, I, a long time ago, a matter of fact, before I got ready to record with Willie Nelson, you mentioned Willie on this duet. And I said, Willie, I've got a song that I wanted to do a duet with you on. He said, No problem. And I said, And my wife Kelly, Kelly Lane, she said, But Willie, you haven't even heard this song. And Willie's answer was, It doesn't matter. It's about the artistry. Exactly. It's about doing something that you want to do with somebody that you like. Oh, yeah. And so when, when Willie and I went in the studio, it was an incredible thing. But yeah, it, it is about the artist. Well, and with duets, there's so many great tracks on this new album. But, you know, recently you also were, uh, you know, playing a show with Don Henley and Kenny. Well, yeah, you know, just a few days ago, we, we did uh, a, a special evening for the Opry Trust Fund at the, at Op at the uh, Opry House. Oh, and great. it was to give the Bob Kingsley Living Legend Award to the incredible Jim Ed Norman. Oh, yeah. Who produced great records on myself, along with a, a lot of other artists that were there that night. Don so, Henley, uh, Kenny Rogers, I mean, it, Mickey Gilley, it was a who's who. That's like who's on this album. Uh, really? <laughs> and they, they were all there uh, to sing, and I, I got a chance to, to see Don Henley and visit with Don and since uh, Glenn's passing. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, we're all fans of, of every artist that names I just mentioned. I'm huge fans of all those people. Oh, yeah. So to be among those names was an, a real honor for me. So. And then you guys went out and partied afterwards. Right? <laughs> yeah, right. No, everybody went to bed. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, we're at that age now so, where so, we go home well, and we you know, lay down. You know, now that you're in your 50s, you got to slow down a little <laughs> yeah, bit. Right, I understand. Yeah. I was 50 when I was born. <laughs> <laughs> well, now let's talk about your tour because I know you're going to be touring this year. And, uh, and, and you're working on a new book. We're looking forward to seeing that and reading it. I, you know, I, I, touring is the instant gratification. I mm -hmm. mean, you go in the studio and you re, you're relating to a red light when it comes on and you hope that the people will like it. But when you're on tour and you walk on stage, 
and you do a song, they let you know instantly if they like it oh, through yeah. their reaction. Mm -hmm. So to me, live performance is the ultimate in any performer's career, and that's why so many people really and truly have a hard time giving it up. Yeah, oh it's yeah. It's something that you always want. It's incredible. Well, you know, we were talking too, you're probably gonna start touring uh, Europe more because you're so popular there. I'm fortunate to be able to go over there. I, I, I love the cultures, different cultures in different countries, and I love the people. The, the language barriers sometimes are dif difficult. What amazes me is, uh, recently, or not long ago, we went to Japan, Charlie Daniels and Roseanne Cash and myself, and we did a show in, uh, in Japan, and, and no one spoke English. But, you know, you're standing on stage and you're, and you're singing your song and you right. look out in the audience and they're singing along with you, <laughs> the words. But then you get in the autograph line or mm -hmm. the meet and greet afterwards and you have to have an interpreter. Right, right. You know, they phonetically learn the songs yeah. before you ever get there. So, yeah, I want to work, uh, I wanna work uh, overseas more and work Europe and, and different countries. Well, you're so popular there. Yeah, well, I'm, and, I'm And, you know, you and I were talking also, TG, to where there's a groundswell, really, of, of more of the classic country, which, you know, you were a part of. Although, truthfully, with the new album, I think you're sort of taking it <laughs> to the next level. You're mixing all the genres of music. Well, you know, that's the reason that I did the album was because in concert and through, you know, just correspondence with the fans, they kept saying, you know, we, we miss hearing the voices of mm -hmm. Willie Nelson and Merle Haggard and George Jones. Oh, and, yeah. and matter of fact, George's uh, studio visit with me when we recorded was his last. Wow. So that was special for me. Especially that you were able to capture that. Yeah, you know, I mean, that, that was friend. very incredible. I didn't know it was going to be the last. He didn't either. But so when, when these voices, uh, when these people tell me that they want to hear these voices and that they miss hearing them, I said, well, what better way to bring it back and to put it all in one album? Right. So, as I said earlier, I picked the voices that everyone knows without ever having to hear their name. You know, yeah. instantly when you hear you a Jerry Lee it. Lewis you or a Haggard. Eyes. Yeah, you know who they mm -hmm. are. So it, it was a labor of love for me. Well, it was great that you captured it. Now, where? what's your website to where all of our viewers can uh, find you? Well, you, you can keep up with our tour and everything that's happening in our, our life on tgshepherd.com and, of course, I'm a huge social media guy. <laughs> Which I mean, is great. hey, when I'm sitting in an airport or I'm just sitting around somewhere, I'm on I'm on Facebook or Twitter or something. Yeah. So you know, uh, you know, you can, I'm very accessible. I think I think the more accessible uh, an artist is. Uh, increases the chances of longevity. Well, and I think the fans appreciate it because once they, you know, enjoy your music and your albums, they want to be able to know you also personally. Yeah, and they want to know that that they actually can reach out, and mm -hmm. if and if they get to, you'll get back to them. And I, I mean, I love to do that. So right. yeah, I, you can reach me. Uh, you know, like I say, uh, our website tgshepherd.com or Twitter or or Facebook. And uh, hey, I, I'm I love communicating with the people. You keep your finger on the pulse. Mm -hmm and they'll always let you know what they want. Well, and I think you have. I think you've given the people what they want with a new album. <laughs> hope so. so great job. Thank you. T.G. Shepard, the one and only. Be sure and catch him on tour. Uh, pick up the brand new album, which uh, there's not a bad track on here, and you'll know every artist. And uh, just a great guy, and he will be touring Europe soon. Thanks for watching the Fox 17 Rock and Review.